We go back to the mailbag, and you guys are kind of weird. Just like the moon from Majora's Mask, we shall consume. Can Christians meme? We talk to the experts. Us. Kristen Wagner from ADF. She's a person. All this and more on The Babylon Bee Podcast. The Babylon Bee. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the Babylon Bee Podcast. You nailed those uh, stingers was so this good. time. Best, just, best ones ever. Yeah. Sometimes when we're pressed for time, I don't look at the stingers until I sit at oh, the yeah. chair, and I'm like, I don't even know what I'm reading. Right yeah. now. I'm pretty sure Travis wrote these. We oh, shall fantastic. consume. <laughs> We shall consume. consume. I was using your I alien voice. Yeah. <laughs> so that's from Legend of Zelda, right? I guess yeah. so. Mm -hmm. But the voice is from the alien sketch later today. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Although I don't think any of us are talking about Majora's Mask in the consume segment, so. All right. Consume. That makes sense. I don't know if we have a Travis's Game Corner today, or maybe he would talk about Majora's Mask. Mm. Can we get a Travis's Game Corner? We should get a Travis's Game Corner. We actually got some comments this week. People were upset that there was no Travis's Game Corner in the last oh. podcast. Yeah, that's sad. So it is really more sad. often. Travis's Game Corner. You know, in Majora's Mask, you are in great threat from a moon, which is going to consume the earth in three days. So you have three days to beat the game. Not in real time, thankfully. The game can be beaten way faster than 72 hours. But you do have to kind of cycle back and through it in a time loop. So it has a kind of Groundhog Day thing going on. Um, but what I really like about the moon is that it's got this, you know, this evil presence and it's foreboding and it's probably the darkest Zelda game as it were because uh, most of them are, you know, light, cheery fields and everything. Most of the time it's not very depressing. Uh, but this one, very foreboding. But then they go out of their way to be like, Okay, you know that moon that's going to kill you? It also has the worst face in the world. And it really makes me wonder what what's going on with that moon? I mean, it's got these giant eyeballs. It's got this huge mouth with this creepy teeth grin thing. And, I mean, what is astronomy like in this alternate universe? Because it's not Hyrule. This is an alternate universe of Hyrule called Termina. And most of the game takes place in Clock Tower, or Clock Town, excuse me, which is divided into four sections because the system couldn't load how big this town is. This is a major metropolis full of five people. And there's this huge moon. And you go on a rip-roaring adventure to stop the moon by summoning four giants and it's all very flat earthish you know it kind of makes me think of like the idea that the earth is a pancake and it's just turtles all the way down holding up this pancake um so giants hold up the moon which has a mouth and eyes and a nose what is it smelling out in space i have no idea and then of course because nintendo loves to do all sorts of like crossover type things, you get Majora's Mask in Animal Crossing where people look just like you, Bucky. They go around town. They look like animals. They don't talk like animals. They talk like normal people. and they But they wear shirts and stuff. And then you can talk to people. And then there's holidays and everything. And Animal Crossing really kind of bothers me because it's fun. And I like to play it and pretend I'm this real person inside an animal world. You know, it's great when you don't have any friends. Because then you can write letters to the animals, and guess what? They will reply back. And the animals are educated, they're smart, and they've read Pride and Prejudice. So I kind of don't know what Jeff Zuckerberg's talking about with the Metaverse. Because the Metaverse has already been here. And it's called Animal Crossing. Now, all Nintendo needs to do is expand that Animal Crossing town into a consistent network. And then people will start jacking in to the Animal Crossing-verse. Uh, which won't be good for humanity, but it will be adorable. And much 
less creepy than Jeff Zuckerberg's Meta thing, which I still don't know how he's going to get that going. Everyone wants to be having business meetings with Tom Nook. They don't want business meetings with you as a CG avatar. That's stupid. You know what's great? Tom Nook, he's got business sense. But the real thing that bothered me about Animal Crossing New Horizons was the distinct lack of adventure. So Animal Crossing, I always feel like it needed to evolve. The first game is kind of like this proof of concept. Okay, sure. The second game is like, okay, now we're, now we're getting somewhere. Now we have hats. We, we can wear hats, guys. We can decorate our house even better. This is good. There's some online capabilities. Perfect. But then there's city folk, and it's like, oh, it's the same game, but with a tiny city that you can go to. And I'm like, this is dumb. And then they're like, no, now it's a new leaf, and you're the mayor. And guess what? I don't want to be the mayor. I want to live in the Animal Crossing town. But now New Horizons, you're on an uncharted island in the South Pacific. Every climate is the same. And since when do islands get snow? I mean, I guess in Iceland or Greenland. I don't know. Animal Crossing New Horizons is okay. It's a further evolution of the basic idea. But they, what they fail to evolve is the artificial intelligence for all the animal neighbors that you have. Because I had a friend named Philbert, and he's a squirrel. And he, he would just kind of say the same basic things every day. And um, he loves cheese, which, I mean, who doesn't? And that's how we really bonded. But, you know, now with like things like chat GPT and, you know, whatever creepy things are out there, we could really make those animals come to life. Why aren't they having, like, full-on behaviors? I mean, I, I shouldn't be too harsh. They do have behaviors. You'll see them like, oh, I love collecting bugs, so they'll go out collecting bugs. But they don't have nine-to-five jobs. They don't have um, disputes with their other friendly animal neighbors. Every now and then you'll see them huffing around all angry, but they don't like ever try to, you know, slash the tires of the other guy's car. You know, I want some real delinquency. That way, there's a reason for a police force. Animal Crossing Police Force, a new third-person shooter with cover-based mechanics coming this summer from Nintendo. Would be great. That's what I want. But... More importantly, what we need is to maintain that sense of adventure, which brings us, of course, back to Zelda and why there's a moon with a face. And I think that's entirely because their Termina is in the Animal Crossing world, where everything has a face. Animals talk and wear pants, and now the moon has a face, and it can smell you from miles away you know, interstellar miles. Come to think of it, the moon in Majora's Mask looks a lot like Joe Biden. I mean, that nose. He really wants to sniff your hair. Kind of troublesome. But there's also a great mechanic in Majora's Mask where you can transform into different species of animals, or not animals, uh, races. Because in fantasy worlds, black and white isn't a race. Human and Goron is a race. And then Zora is a race. And the civil rights movement between Zora and Goron, it's a huge problem. Are you recording this? Yeah, I am. It's for, it's for my diary. So anyway, the Zora can swim. Hey, you want to hear a stat that's unfortunately not satire? Over 85% of grass-fed beef sold in the U.S. is imported from overseas. Even worse, these imported products can receive a product of USA label if they are processed and packaged here. <laughs> This is so absurd, it sounds like something we'd write. <laughs> but this is happening across the country. If you're interested in a better way that delivers real 100% American meat, then you need Good Ranchers. 
They deliver the best meat and seafood America has to offer, guaranteed. Their meat is born, raised, and made in America every single time. Good Ranchers is passionate about connecting you to American farms, providing meat you can trust and feel good about buying. Right now, when you use our exclusive code, Babylon Beef, <laughs> pretty clever, Babylon Beef at checkout, you'll get $30 off your order and get free express shipping. Plus, if you subscribe, you get their price lock guarantee, which means your price stays the same for the life of your subscription. Remember, use code BABYLONBEEF to save $30 on your order of 100% American meat from Good Ranchers. Well, guys, we are pre-recording this for the week of Be Live. Well, actually, it is the week of Be Live. We're not really pre-recording yeah. this. We're like a day early. <laughs> yeah. That's you guys true. are in Texas right now, and I'm in Finland. And you're in Finland. Yeah, so. that's when, yeah, when it's coming out. Yeah. So we'll be setting up right now. And but anyway, we might not be like super timely on the news because we're not recording this at the usual time when we're trying to be right on top of it. So we're doing a little more timeless topics. As far as we know, Carter's still alive. Carter could still be alive. Biden could still be president. And, st and still alive. <laughs> the Earth has not been conquered by aliens yet, as far as we know. <laughs> Well, we've had uh, some popular segments in the past where we did uh, can lo can the libs meme and can uh, can the right meme, and now we're going to do can Christians meme this week. And I haven't seen these yet, but we have a bunch of Christian memes lined up. The word on the street is that Christians can, that actually Christians are pretty good at it. I've seen some Jesus pretty funny a lot Christian of them. Memes. Sometimes there's funny Jesus, yeah. Jesus memes. There are, yeah. But Dan probably picked him, and he doesn't do depictions of Jesus. So I see. Or maybe That's he black true. maybe he blacked out his face or something. He's an iconoclast. But mm. never mind. Um, <laughs> Well, we also hit the mailbag this week. <clears throat> We're trying to catch up on our mailbag. Please send us more at podcast at babylonbee.com so we can be even more behind on the mailbag. Anything you want to ask us, feel free. Hit us up with there, uh, right there. And we're also going to do a consume segment, what we've been reading, watching, and playing video games to the glory of God. Hey, hit like, subscribe, and click the little bell to turn on notifications to keep up with all our podcasts on YouTube. And you go find our Babylon Bee podcast page on Instagram and Facebook. Can Christians meme? Can Christians meme? We know the left is bad at memes. We know the right has had some cringy memes, as yeah. we saw in a yep. previous episode. And uh, now it's time to see if Christians can meme. We're mm. going to see what we think. I don't think any of us... Have any of us looked at these yet? No, I, I, have I'm not, not, I have not seen any I'm of kind of nervous. Oh, you're I have a little, not seen any of these. Little butterflies in, in I got your, some butterflies right butterflies now. Butterflies in your tongue There's a lot tongue of pressure. <laughs> There's a little crap. pressure. All right, so let's look at the first meme. Uh, this I don't even know what this is from. This is from. Uh, it's from the Old Testament. No, the movie. Oh, the picture. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> that's okay. from. Uh, this is from Ragnarok. That was from Ragnarok. Oh, okay. When he's in disguise and uh, yeah, yeah. In there. They're okay. on uh, the planet. It's not really a planet. Sarlacc or Sarkon they're on Asgard, or... right? Isn't this on? No, Asgard? no, no. They're they're on. Um, Oh. The, the Grand Master's Planet. What I is think it? all of this information is wrong, yeah. but here yeah, we are. Yeah, the 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 Grand the Grand Master. Meme that's not going to make sense. Okay, anyway. so <laughs> how do you say that? Zipporah. Zipporah. Zipporah, Zipporah is is Moses's first wife. All right, so Zipporah says, "I like how you keep explaining the Bible part, and it's the Thor Ragnarok part <laughs> that, that we're not getting." <laughs> You just asked who Zipporah was. That's so all Thor, I was, you know. It, Thor is wearing a veil. Uh, is his the, the face cloak. is glowing. Or, oh, his, his face is glowing. His face was, I thought his face was glowing like when Moses came down, but no, it does say it's my veil. Oh, well, no, the, no. I think it is supposed to be glowing. It's supposed so to be the glowing. from beneath the he veil. He just came down came from down Sinai. From so she goes, what's with the... And Moses says, it's my, it's veil. my veil. And she says, but I can still see the glory. And then he like covers his face more. And he says, not when I do this, you can't. And then there's and Bruce Mark Banner is, is is Joshua. Yeah. yeah, Mark Ruffalo is Joshua. You know, it's it's kind of funny. Yeah. It's kind of. I, I don't even know if it worked. I just know we destroyed it <laughs> by our delivery of it. It's kind of, it's kind of a funny retelling of the story, I guess. I, I don't. Yeah, know. if Moses actually said that, no, yeah. when I do this, you can. So okay, uh, yeah. uh, C. <clears throat> I'll give it a C. So here's the next one. There's a little caricature of a woman saying, "Never ask a woman her age," and a caricature of a man saying, "A man his salary." And then there's a group of people that says, a charismatic prophet, what they prophesied in the winter of 2019, 2020. And I guess, are those all charismatic prophets yeah, there? Yeah, it's just 20, like different. 20 words for 2020. It's like a prophetic thumbnail of something. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. 
Were they preaching a lot of end of the world stuff again, or what? They just always are. Like if you look, if you yeah. look at the, this is a little niche, but if you ever follow any of the charismatic blogs, they mm. they put that these out like every day. It's almost like a horoscope. There, it's always like, uh -huh. the words I declare over 2020. 2020 oh, will I be see. a year of change. And uh -huh. A lot of times. It either never comes true or it's just so vague, uh, like a horoscope, that there's no way to measure whether these prophecies come true or not. Yeah, they, they do things like financial predictions, too, like a lot. Like Jesus so you kinda... is going to really love Sagittarius this year. <laughs> right. Stuff like Jesus that. is <laughs> blessing out on cancer. You're, yeah, not you're... that kind of cancer. <laughs> the word, the number 47 is going to really be a good number this year. <laughs> yeah, It's no. a little heavy-handed. I'm, I'm not a big fan of this meme, but... Um, yeah, not a huge thing. All right, what do you think? Uh, all right, so this one is that guy, Todd White. Oh, I don't know if you guys know who he is. He's the guy with all the dreadlocks. That... Was he the guy that was lengthening people's legs? I don't know. I, I don't know about that. I do know that I think he's... it was him. He, yeah. he would do healings, but what he would do is go up to people and say, like, one of your legs is an inch too short, and he would pull it and, like, show, I have miraculous... Can he make both it. of my legs longer? <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know if Todd White did this. I, I do know. We weird, should have him on the podcast. We should. Hey, can, you make, can you make this one longer? <laughs> nah, can you do the other one? Yeah, just keep on going. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's good. All well, right, no, so I, I do think Todd, so Todd White, he's done a few things. There was a documentary he did, I think, with Stephen Baldwin, and they go around and preach the gospel, and a lot of people got saved through it. So not to say that it's all bad, but he does say, um, the cross is a demonstration of your worth, is what he said. Then Dwight Schrute from the office said, false, the cross is a demonstration <laughs> of your wickedness. <laughs> Which I, I do like that. Both one, of these things are true. I yeah, mean, like yeah. if you think about it, both of these things are true. But I like this one both for the theology and for the Dwight Schrute. Just, response you're just popping face. Yeah. Just, yeah. False. I like, False. <laughs> I always like that. I like line. him being the fact checker. Yeah. yeah. Battle Star Galactica. I, I don't know the context. I don't know. I guess he actually said that. So. Mm. All right. Here's one. Uh, we have <laughs> Moses from the movie uh, The Ten Commandments, I think. And he says, Wandered in the desert 40 years, Moses. And then we have a map that shows the distance from Cairo to Jerusalem. And it says it's nine hours and 31 minutes. And it would take six days to walk. Well, nine hours, 31 minutes to drive, six days to walk. Mm. So it took Moses 40, 40 days to, or, or 40, 40 years. years to cover the distance. And then it says, worst navigator ever. I mean, it's not the best meme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is it trying to? I don't know what it's trying to say, but I've heard people say this in sermons before, where it's like they it wasn't the point around. that they were banned. The point yeah, is they, that they God, couldn't. they weren't allowed yeah. in Israel. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't it about. A lot of, it should have the context missing. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Facebook yeah. uh, fact check. Up. It's fact not about them getting context. lost. Context yeah, that's missing. right. All right. Uh, here's that uh, philosopher raptor meme. And Velociraptor. It's, Velociraptor. Uh, if the Bible is a light unto my path, and the Bible is the sword of the Spirit, is the Bible a lightsaber? The mm. Bible is a light. Because it's a because it's a Cause light. It's both it's a, a light. It's a sword that the lights sword up. Of the Spirit and a sword. The sword that sword. lights up. Mm. Meh. Meh. It, it's kind of boomery. This is good. These are all like anti-charismatic. This memes. is something my grandma <laughs> would probably email to me. Mm. Yeah. Is the Bible a lightsaber? Uh, okay. The next one is this. It's um that. There's a meme, there's a classic meme, the guy who looks kind of like a monkey with a pointy nose. Yeah, the he's puppet kind of guy. The puppet guy. He says, charismatics, God will always, will, w God's will is always to heal. Charismatics driving by a hospital. Side eye? Meh, side eye, side eye. Mm. Okay. Yeah. It's all, right. all right, now we have SpongeBob. Not, not all charismatics say that. Anyway. We have, <laughs> we have SpongeBob, uh, he's all, he's all, it's kind of the, I don't know what the context of the SpongeBob image is. He's but he's like the soft, nice, soft, smiling, nice. eager SpongeBob. Yeah. Christians when sharing the faith, and then you have muscly SpongeBob. Christians when arguing minor <laughs> theology. <points. laughs> That's a good That's one. That's a good one. I like that. that one. I like funny. that a lot. Like good that. one. That's the best one so far, I think. Uh, this one we have the sort of uh, crying NPC character. He says, "Please, don't you see how misogynistic your church and fellow believers are? You don't deserve being an incubator. I would treat you like a queen." And then there's a princess girl with crosses behind her saying, I am not sleeping with you. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. an interesting line. I don't, I don't, I've never encountered, sure. like, are there atheists that try to, like, get Christian women by arguing with? I, I don't know what this is. I don't know what don't this know. is trying to parody. He's trying to be a feminist. Okay. So this is uh, Andy. What's his name? Sandberg. Andy, Andy Sandberg and Zoe Deschanel. 
talking to each other. This was a fun episode. They did a Brooklyn Nine Nine -Nine New Girl crossover. crossover. Both good shows. So Andy said, "Yeah, I read the Bible." So he says, "Okay, then name me four books." And Andy says, "John." That's on me. I set the bar too low. <laughs> that's a good one. I like that. That is, that is really fun. It takes a second one. to hit. No, that's mm-hmm. pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, we have kind of a, an edited version of a Cyanide and Happiness comic. And a guy says, do you have any job qualifications? And then the uh, applicant says, no, you're hired. And then there's a sign that says, now hiring a youth pastor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the reason why that's like funny that is because I got a young adults it's pastor very... job when I had zero qualifications. Yeah, that's so always, I, they're I just totally... desperate. Anybody yeah. with a face, that's right. you're the youth pastor. There's an explosion, there's a crater. We need to throw somebody who's nearest into the crater <laughs> exactly. next. Yes. Yeah, it, yeah I feel gonna... like they just pick whoever at church is in their early 30s. That's yeah. right. <laughs> that's who's the, closest? That's the youth yeah. pastor. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> who's, who's old enough to be an authority figure, but young enough to relate to these to kids? Be, that's that's right. <laughs> to be kind of cool. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that is so relatable. And it's so true. Uh, uh, here's a picture of a guy falling down the stairs and uh, into a ladder. <laughs> and oh it gosh. says, me when I lean on my own understanding. <laughs> I like, I like that. that. It's wholesome. Sim- simple. Simple, wholesome. Yeah. I kind of, that feels bad. Okay, let's see. Where are we? Okay, there's a picture of a uh, an African man in the sky. Uh, well, the, the key thing is there's a headline. Zimbabwe pastor gets arrested for selling $500 tickets to heaven. And then the meme is responding to that, I think. So the Zimba- it, Zimbabwe pastor got arrested for selling $500 tickets to heaven. And the Catholic, oh, Church, the Catholic says, Church says, not bad, kid. Oh, this bad. is all one. Because they, yeah. they used to, you know, I thought there was just one. They used to think it's, you could buy your way. It's making yeah. fun of indulgence. Of okay, I'm sorry. I didn't see that the second part was still the same meme. Yeah, it's a little, it's formatted a little funny. Yeah, but, uh, it is. Anyway, it's okay. the Catholic Church was selling indulgences. One of the reasons why we are Protestants today. That's okay. Yeah. All right. Here's one. Uh, there's a guy plugging his ears uh, with an earplug, and it says, Jesus, talking about self-denial, hell, righteousness, immortality, the narrow gate, putting God first, holiness, rejecting the world, and being rejected by the world. Progressive Christians, and they're putting the earplug in their ears, and the earplug is labeled love. So they're not listening to all of Jesus' other teachings because they've put the love. I think it's a little... Uh, Heavy-handed. And I think I would wordy. have named the earplug something else. I, I think it's heavy. I think it has like a point. Ignorance. There is but a point. These are it's one just of those, I, I often see this in political memes. Yeah. Where I feel like you could do the reverse you of this just also. Flip it around. Yeah. Where there are certain you know Christians and Calvinists who they they take all the yeah. all the strict rules and stuff and then they kind of ignore yeah, the love aspect. Yeah. You could always. It. That's true. I've heard that said about those clapter jokes ah, that like yeah. Colbert does. Is like if you could just. Replace Republican for Democrat. Exactly. Then it's yeah. not so really I, I think it does make a point, but I think you kind of have yeah. to you have to take both things into account. Yeah. No, you guys are wrong. Yeah. But it's also not love that they're putting in their ears. It's willful ignorance. It's an earplug. And it's an earplug. <laughs> All right. Who's is this? I think this? it's Adam's turn. Adam's turn. Uh, here's a uh, Lord of the Rings one. You got is that Frodo there? Frodo's Frodo's rowing. Frodo's away. rowing the boat. They can tell you uh, what frame and time code this happens <laughs> in which movie, uh, and it says faith. One is justified by grace alone through faith alone. And there's Sam wading through the water saying, "Works, of course you are, and I'm coming with you." <laughs> <laughs> it's a complicated way to get the point across. <laughs> well, I think it works better for me because I know exactly what's happening in the scene. You uh-huh. know, like that's the, right. And faith goes back and pulls works out of the mm-hmm. like resurrects works. I don't think you can't read into it. I think it, it if you were to deconstruct the whole thing, it wouldn't work. It just doesn't work. But it is. Funny. It falls apart. All right. So I um this is why do I keep getting these complicated ones? Okay, Catholics against <laughs> seedless watermelons. Seedless watermelons against Catholics. It's two, there's two Facebook groups. Rival Facebook groups. Rival Facebook groups. Oh, rival Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. It's a community organization. Catholics against seedless watermelons, seedless watermelons against Catholics. I don't like memes like this because it feels like, then someone wrote, I don't know what to say and screen grabbed those, but clearly they're just trying to do a joke on a joke. Someone already made that as a joke. They're like, I can't believe this. Yeah. It's like, yeah, well, they were, that's the point. It's the old uh, Simpsons McBain thing where he goes, that's That's the the joke. joke. (laughs) The joke. Oh, this is one of my favorites like a classic old one so we have uh the angel wrestling with jacob and it says and the angel said unto him Stop <laughs> <laughs> i love this one 
And the angel said unto him, stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself. But lo, he could not, for the angel was hitting him with his own hands. That's oh my gosh, that would make that's the best one to do. The classic. So oh my funny. gosh, that's so good. <laughs> Do you have anxiety in your life and do you find it hard to find time to meditate on the scriptures? I know I do. Look at me, I'm a mess. Abide is the number one Christian meditation app. Abide is this cool app, see look, I've got it on my phone right here. It's got a scripture readings for the day, it has meditations for various different problems you might be facing such as anxiety and stress. It even has a whole thing for sleep, sleep stories. So you can kind of just doze off as you peacefully meditate on God's word. Everything's really well produced with different sound effects like, you know, babbling brooks and waterfalls. So why don't you download the Abide app today and you can find peace amidst the chaos. Right now we have a special offer when you subscribe. 25% off your first year when you sign up for the premium subscription. But only if you text our promo code BABYLON to 22433. Don't wait. Download Abide Sleep and Pray Meditation today and text our promo code Babylon to 22433 today to get 25% off. I, I uh, love it. Here's a sort of trendy looking girl uh, sitting out in the sun with her sunglasses. And it says, being yourself is the prettiest thing a person can be. And then there's Ray Comfort <laughs> saying, blaspheming liar, thief, and adulterous at heart. <laughs> Just that, that works really well for me. With the blaspheming <laughs> lie, smiling face. <laughs> I know. Inspirational. I well, because that's the way that he says one. it too. He always says it. <laughs> blaspheming. I'm not judging you, yeah. but you're a blaspheming liar, <laughs> an adulterate at heart. Adulterate. So you should have done that one because yeah, you didn't do the, the voice. voice. No, 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 no. It's good. It's, anyway, we got another one. It's Zach uh, Efron, and he's kind of got his hands up like he's a cool guy. Hmm? Man, hmm? you were with Jesus, Peter. <laughs> shrugging and smiling. Yeah, ah, yeah shrugging and smiling. That is well, so good. Me. I like that a lot. All right, oh, here's a new. Here's a good one. <laughs> Simple and to the point. That took me a second. It says you might think sinning is good, but and then there's a picture of Sinbad. <laughs> It's in bed. <laughs> and he's looking at you real, yeah. real judgy. Judge <laughs> that is great. Oh, that's uh, good. I dude. don't know this movie. What is this? Megamind. Is Megamind, yeah. Oh, I never saw that. Uh, I don't know anything about this meme. It says Stephen Furtick. I don't know who that is. Oh, you're a heretic, all right, just not a super one. And then it says Rob Bell. Oh, yeah, what's the difference? And then there's Megamind saying, or Steve Furtick saying Presentation. Presentation. I don't, I don't understand any of these references. I don't get this. I feel like an AI generated this meme. <laughs> <It> just <laughs> slapped random labels on things. That's funny. Okay, um, this is that <laughs> dumb looking kid. Okay, buys a herd of pigs. It's like bad luck the something. Loser, yeah, yeah, the bad luck guy. <laughs> buys a herd of pigs. Jesus cast him. <laughs> They, they hey. run off a cliff. I need to check. I need to get my braces hey, tight. How about my new pig? <laughs> hey, look at this, guys. <laughs> All right, here's a badly drawn, uh, like MS Paint art of Sonic the Hedgehog, and he's holding up a Bible, King James version. It says Sonic the Saved. I don't get this at yeah. all. It's oh wait, weird. there's more to it. Oh, there's more. Okay, so now we have another bad fan art of Sonic holding the, a bi the Bible and he's smiling and putting his fist up and it says, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Yeah. I don't know if this person was trying to be funny I'm or not. you can read that. I just think I it's non-sequitur. It's just funny because it's sort of it's, like a non-sequitur. I like the really positive song yeah. and then men who practice homosexuality. <laughs> yeah. well, it's like all the judging all the people that won't make it. Yeah, it's like... I like the idea that some Sonic fan was trying to make a really serious meme here to make a point and it, yeah. it works for me. Uh, here's a minion and it says, the first ever cordless phone was created by God. He named it Prayer. It never loses its signal, and you never have to recharge it. Use it anywhere. <laughs> so we're, is, getting, we're getting this, into the yeah. boomer memes now. These are like the ones your like, grandmother would say. This is definitely This is on a oh, pillow. Sweet. Oh, and then hold on. Here's another minion correcting him, I guess, or something. It says, God has no phone, but I talk to him. He has no Facebook, but he's still my friend. He does not have a Twitter, but I still follow him. Yeah, that's that's. These are like the very wholesome yeah, grandma yeah, meme. Yeah. I like it. On a pillow. 
<clears throat> okay, here we go. It's the happy guy, sad guy, happy guy, shocked guy face. Sam Smith, openly gay, sings a song named Unholy, which glorifies infidelity with a transgender woman. He's very happy about that. Happy That's about great. It. That's great. Dressed as the devil. Oh. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I Yeah, because they're making the point that people are more upset that he dressed like the devil than... Well, I, but no, I think I most think... people were shocked don't like both things. Yeah, I would say... Most people that are outraged by one song are unholy. Outraged by I read. Other. Yeah, I read this differently. I think what he's trying to say is like, yeah, he's promoting all this stuff. But he's doing it as the devil, so it's like they it's kind of self defeating and that he's being the devil going, all oh, this stuff is great, and you're like, yeah, but he's the devil. I you think know? you're giving these people too much credit there, Kyle. <laughs> it's forty <laughs> chess. It's forty meme chess, is what I don't it is. Think so. Yeah, it's kind of unclear. Okay, so now we have Cal. <laughs> We have like the woman that has the, the what? Yeah. <laughs> it says, Calvinist hearing joy to the world be like, the what? <laughs> you know, joy to the world. Is that because Calvinists joy. don't have any joy? Well, they, no, they hate the world. Oh, well, they hate the world <laughs> and joy. <laughs> oh. No, they think that, because yeah. it's like if it's joy to the elect, right, instead of joy to the world. That's, that's the joke. Right. Uh, that's true. Got it. Uh, here's one. It's the, th what's his name again? Thanos. Thanos. And Thanos. it says, Stephen Anderson did you bring your Bible to church? And Iron Man responds, yep, it's an ESV Bible. And then I can't see what's happening. Oh, it's he's Thanos, Thanos punching, punching. And punching Iron Man. So somebody... Steven Anderson is the is the crazy King James Version. Oh, we'll KJ, have to yeah. review some of his clips sometimes. It's, it's really great. If there, it ain't King James, there's a phrase in the Bible. Old Testament that says, um, him who pisseth against the wall. Yeah. Oh, I know have that Have you seen one. that clip? From I, know, I know that passage. Oh, so he preaches on it and he does this long and he's pounding the pulpit about the problem with our society today is men don't piss it against the wall anymore. Mm. You, are all, you all sit down when you pee. Uh, I like that. <laughs> oh. He makes a big application out of it. But I mean, isn't the British word for piss kind of getting drunk? Well, it's, it's I don't know. It's oh, it pisseth. changed over time. Yeah. I know, but why, you don't change the King James, guys. No, but I mean back in the King James. You was think it, you think, think that when, it, it meant when, piss back then? But I think now when he's King taking James the piss. Bible was written, pisseth meant like urinate. Are you and I think the pissed mm. now as drunk is a probably more modern slang. Yeah. I'm getting pissed, and they would say when you drink a lot, like, you have you to taking, pee all the time. Well, they would say you're anyway. taking the piss when you're making fun of me. Now, That's as far it. as our are you taking the piss? Are we allowed to say pisseth? I don't know. Are we allowed to say just piss? Aren't thou taking the pisseth? Like, like, would I be allowed to say I'm gonna go take a piss? Yeah, I, I, I don't. I say that more often now on the podcast. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah, what are the words we can get away with? I need. Yeah. We should come up with a a list. Yeah, a list. Did you hear about the fly on the toilet seat? He got pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's another meme. Um, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. It says um, makes memes poking fun at both Calvinists and Arminians. I'm playing both sides so, so that I always come out on top. <laughs> it's a good Luther name. Chuckle. Yeah. yeah. yeah chuckle, chuckle. <laughs> All right. So now we have a bunch of people worshiping the Sunday lunch crowd 30 minutes before verbally assaulting an 18-year-old waitress. <laughs> 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 yeah. That's great. That's oh, funny. Uh, sorry, I have a story that I kind of want to tell. Oh, about, yeah. No, I, I want to hear it. No, no, it's, it's not. I'll, I'll tell it later. Okay. Um, <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not on the podcast, is that what you're saying? Yeah. I, I was so I was at Bell's Diner the one time in Sherman. I go there a lot and I saw um Dennis Prager there. This was before we talked to him or met him. And I was kind of a fan and I wanted to go up and say hi to him. But uh he was outside and I was inside, and then when I went up to pay at the counter, there was this old guy just laying into the cashier about how his his waitress wasn't good. And he was arguing over price and just being really rude to her. And I was like, I was like, come on, man. Like they're doing their best. And and I was kind of on the cashier side when I overheard this and he was just taking up time. And so then that guy was kind of mad at me. And then I went back and sat down and I saw it was the friend that was sitting with Dennis Prager. <laughs> oh, and I was no. like, well, now I can't go say hi to them. <laughs> <laughs> Your friend's a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh. So here's, it's got a sort of gravity well drawing of different stars. It says the sun, neutron star, black hole, the crushing weight of being the only person on the whole internet with correct theology. It's heaviest objects in the universe. That's pretty good. It's okay. I like that. Contribute to your salvation. It's a man reading a book, cool. and then it flips. It's called How to. How to contribute to your salvation. It opens up, and uh, 
you can see that there is nothing. <laughs> There's nothing in the book. And then he cries. <laughs> He's crying. And then he cries. Oh, sad. He must right. be an Arminian. Here we have a crusader and a clock where all 12 of the time marks are marked crusade. And it says, good heavens, just look at the time. <laughs> okay. I mean, <laughs> I that's random, but I kind of like it. I feel like this is something you would post in, in <laughs> response. Like if somebody said, at this drag queen story hour, this yeah. dude, Gyrate in uh, front of these yeah. children, then you would that's a good like, response. That's a response meme. Yeah. That's right. Uh, here's a Mandalorian meme. You got the stormtroopers there. It says Bail Prophets. We have you four hundred fifty to one, and then Elijah's the Mandalorian. I like those odds. I like those odds. All right. When Calvinists try to be encouraging, it's Woody with Spoony. What's his name? <laughs> Spoony is that his name? What What is his name? His name. Uh, Spor- Spor- Sporky. Sporky. Spork- yeah. When he's like, I'm trash. <laughs> And so what he's trying to, Calvin is trying to be encouraging. You're trash, just like me. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You are trash, is what it is. All right, here's one with this strong a Doge guy. I think that's Doge. Is that Doge? Doge They're not Doge. Guy. It's like... Shiba you know, Inu. The, yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the strong Shiba. And he says, traditional worship. Riches I heed not, nor vain empty praise. Thou mine inheritance now and always. Thou and thou only first in my heart. High King of Heaven, my treasure. Thou be thou art. my vision, everyone. It's a be thou my vision verse, and then it says modern hypno chant rock, and it's a it's a the little kind of cow. <laughs> it says, "Give me smooches, Daddy God." Times one hundred thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Solid. Uh, uh, here we've got a Spider Man meme. You got Tobey Maguire. I'm a Christian, and then he responds, "But Peter, Christianity is responsible for the Crusades and colonization." And Toby says, I just told you that I'm already a Christian. You don't need to sell it to me. <laughs> I actually like that. That's funny. It doesn't seem like it was made by a Christian. Uh, people in sin be like, it's like the two. Like Sojak. Yeah, the like, Sojak Whoa! guys. Whoa! They're so excited. Yeah. People in sin be like, show me where it's a sin. <laughs> okay. They're pointing at obviously a sin. Hmm. All right. It's right there. Now we have a picture of clown shoes, and it says, before you mock an atheist, try putting yourself in their <laughs> shoes. <laughs> I try not to laugh at that, because it's just the clapter one. So on the po- <laughs> it's so on the nose. It, got it, me. Is, it, got it me. is funny. Uh, this is a great one. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really good one. It's so good. it's the guy uh, looking back at the other girl from his girlfriend meme, and then uh, his girlfriend is like, well... He's the pillar of salt is a lot looking back at Sodom. Yeah, it doesn't have the guy in it. It's just a pillar of salt. So it's Lot's wife is the guy, right? Yeah, and she's looking right. Back. Oh, that is that is great. All right, it's a couple of people at a funeral. The guy giving the peace sign at the funeral. Lazarus at his own funeral, colorized. Here lies Lazarus of Bethany. Peace. Oh, this one looks confusing. <clears throat> Who started your church? Catholic Church, Constantine, Anglican Church, King Arthur, Lutheran Church, Martin Luther, Evangelical, just a Christian, Jesus, 0 AD. There you go. It actually also has... Meme made by Evangelical gang. <laughs> 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 but uh, the Anglican Church was started by Henry the Henry the Eighth, not by King Arthur. So It says King Arthur. Yeah, I Wait, know. Why does it say the Lutheran Church... It says 1929. Did Martin Luther King Jr.? I th- oh, Martin the Lutheran are Church they, is starting. It's just all, it's all funny. All, are they they're making wrong. fun? I guess they're all wrong. Okay. I don't know what it's trying yeah, to say. That's weird. I think, I think that's Adam's you. Trying. Isn't that you, Oh, it's my turn? Yeah. Uh, so these are just two fat mannequins wearing sort of, I don't know, dad clothes, like polo shirts, shirts. And it yeah. says, brand new Baptist potluck attire section added to JC <laughs> You do see those at church a lot. Yeah. Oh, this, uh, what is that? Um, that's McGee and Me, isn't it? Okay, so me, McGee and Me, Salty in the Singing Songbook, uh, that other one. Adventures and in Odyssey. Adventures and Odyssey, and then what's the last one? I think one? that's Superbook. And su- yeah, Superbook, which is pretty cool. Or but, I may be wrong on that. It, it's one of those Bible cartoons where they go back to Bible times. Yeah, so it's a bunch of Bible cartoons, and then it says, The Boring Testimony Starter Pack. <laughs> that's funny, because we all grew up <laughs> that with that, and we all have boring testimonies. Yeah. Except that we were raised from the dead. All right, here's one. <laughs> Jesus, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And then it says, me on my way to church, and it's a guy <laughs> with a giant Jan Sport backpack. That's pretty funny. That is funny. A little wholesome. I feel that way. 
Uh, here's one. It's a small group leader asks question. Me, who wasn't paying attention, <laughs> coming up with an answer. And it's just files where all the answers are either Jesus, God, or John 316. <laughs> so, or the Bible. Fingers <laughs> going through it. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's see. Okay, girls, uh, it's, it's a picture of uh, Adam and Eve. Eve is reaching up, grabbing the, uh, the fruit, and about to give it to Adam. Girls... Girls have a hard time choosing where to eat because the last time they chose, they doomed all of humanity. Really solid. I've seen it a lot, though. That's the only reason yeah. I didn't laugh. That's, that's not classic. too bad. Mm-hmm. I like that painting, too, because the serpent is like the devil. Morphing into the yeah, devil in, in a very into a man. Cool way. It kind of makes yeah. me want to listen to him. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he yeah. might have something important to no, say. Here, pretty, eat this. Yeah, yes, really. naked woman, I will eat that. Well, I think the, I think the Christians did pretty well. I'm yeah, overall, impressed. I'd say that was like 50%, maybe. I would say over 50, yeah. I, I, I laughed yeah. at a good bit of those, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good job, right. Christians. Christians can meme. Yay. Can Christians meme? Yes. The dollar just hit a seven-month low. Why would you trust your hard-earned savings with unstable governments printing more money while on the brink of default? Protect your financial future with something real, gold and silver, from my friends at Allegiance Gold. Allegiance Gold can help you protect your IRA or 401k with physical gold and silver, or if you prefer, have it delivered securely right to your front door. Allegiance Gold has the highest ratings in the industry. Five stars with trust link, a AAA rating with Business Consumer Alliance, and an A-plus with Better Business Bureau. Get up to $500 in free silver with a qualifying purchase when you visit allegiancegold.com slash B. Or give them a call at 844-790-9191. We may not be able to control the policies of the Biden administration, but we can prepare for the consequences. Protect your future with Allegiance Gold. Visit allegiancegold.com slash B or call 844-790-9191. It's time to consume. What have you guys been reading lately, uh, playing, uh, watching? I feel like we haven't uh, revisited consume in a few weeks. Consume. I've been uh, I've been just chugging books, man. Hmm. I don't like, know, can you chug a book? You've been drinking books? I've been drinking them. <laughs> I'm doing a lot of audio books, so it's helped yeah, me to... Yeah, that does help. Like if you go work out or Dude, even on the long It takes so commute. long for me to get through a book just reading it. I'm a slow reader. So the audio I try book to do the audio books, yeah. I feel like I can read as quickly, but I just I, I just don't have the time. Or yeah, I'll sit down and I oh, fall asleep. And... No, that that's what it is. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it takes time. So when I'm driving for an hour, I can listen to a book, but it's hard to find an hour of time to sit and read a book. Absolutely. Well, I always think it's so much easier. You can, <clears> you can listen at a much higher reading level too then you can read <laughs> i don't know they tell you mm-hmm. so you can like listen to whatever yeah so this is the last time we did this i i read the duggar's new book the duggar oh, yeah. uh, uh girl's new book it's called becoming free indeed <laughs> mm-hmm. it's kind of about her journey out of that legalistic bill gothardism which is mm-hmm. really interesting and uh it was good it was a quick read and enjoyed it and then i read project hail mary the third book from the guy who wrote the martian oh we're Andy Weir. Andy Weir, yeah. I Did like you guys read any fiction. of those, The Martian? Or... I didn't read those. Um, I haven't read Weir. I, I'm a huge science fiction fan. And you'd like it. I, I think you'd like The Martian. And I heard his second book wasn't as good, but I never read it. So I'd love to read it. My I read a bunch of you know John Varley and Heinlein and all the old like all the old science fiction. I really like old science fiction. He's a little too. I, I call it like the F yeah science crowd. Right. Where they're like, science can solve all our problems. Yes. F yeah. Science, science is so cool. You know, this is how, you know and it's just like, eh. And, I just science the crap out of that. Yeah, yeah. I science the, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But I thought it was it was enjoyable. So I read that one. And then I read uh, The Republic, Plato's The Republic. Oh. Which I'd never read before. I was oh, inspired great, by, I was inspired by you. It's really good. Yeah, and I went and read it. I'm, I really enjoyed it. A lot of great nuggets in there. And then yeah. some weird stuff. Well, <laughs> what's interesting about, so I'm now just finishing The Laws. I listened to, I think, all of his other dialogues on audiobook and oh. this, this past month. And so I read The Republic and now I'm finishing reading The Laws. And The Laws is interesting because it, it's, it's a later piece than The Republic. And in the Republic, where he talks about this sort of society run by these enlightened philosopher yeah, the kings, philosopher king, the laws is, it's like a, some people see it as being in conflict, but it's kind of just a companion piece. 
where it's more how a society would be more practically run just by a solid set of laws. But there are always those nuggets that are good. Um, you know, he has this great foundation of education and how it can, you know, bring up good members of society. But then he's he's down on democracy. He's not a big fan of democracy. And, and some of the faults are real, um, but it's not one of his favorite types of society. And then some of the stuff is just straight up authoritarian. Yeah. He right. he promotes like uh, eugenics at some points in the I, Republic. Yeah. In the Republic, uh, he's like pro-abortion, like we should kill the kids yeah. that are like, yeah. And, and it's a little unclear. There's no compassion in it. You know, he makes it clear. The Republic is sort of this thought experiment of yeah, what right. an ideal society Utopia, would look this, like. Yeah, right. But it's the laws is more in a practical sense mm. how you mm -hmm. how you'd form a society with a, a good set of laws to govern it. Yeah, um, that's so that's what I've been reading and then watching. Uh, I started watching the new season of South Park and it's just uh, mm. the first two oh. episodes were great. the The second episode is all uh, making fun of uh, Prince Harry and Meghan, who I don't yeah. really even care about or pay attention to that much. But the way they make fun of them in that episode is I was laughing till I had tears in my eyes. It's I love so that. Funny. That's great. Well, that's really cool because my I I. Can't stand those two. Every time yeah. they're on the television, I'm just, I have a visceral reaction. I'm you just watch like, the, it's the second shot. episode of the season of South Park. It's so funny. Was it the Worldwide Privacy Tour? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. I saw that headline. I was like, I have yeah. to watch that. And they walk around banging drums everywhere. Going, get, we want get privacy. We want privacy. privacy. We want privacy. We want privacy. <laughs> privacy. 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 Dude. Um, okay. So I'm reading a couple of things right now. So you're talking about science fiction. I like, I like William Gibson. So have you ever read William Gibson? So Neuromancer. Uh, the peripheral, actually, there's he a He retweeted show. a Babylon Bee article once, and no. it made me want to go read Neuromancer. <laughs> Neuromancer's not his best work. He gets, he's a futurist. That's what he's known for, though, right? Yeah. That's like the famous one. So a lot of this, a lot of the terminology that we use in society today was, was kind of coined by William Gibson, which is really interesting. In the 80s, like he was talking about, he was talking about like cyberpunk and cyberspace and internet and web oh, interesting. it's like all the stuff that like, like those al names gore, they ended up labeling like al gore stuff. yeah takes his <laughs> takes credit for what william gibson actually did and so it's a really interesting really interesting books but i'm i i like reading those i'm watching the peripheral on hulu so it's an adaptation of one of his books and it's fascinating it's mm. about it's like a time travel thing with haptics so people have like these haptic suits that they get in like they get implanted into their bodies and then they can they can go into these other worlds. It's very interesting. And then they can connect as a military can connect with each other. Like one unit, you can like sense where everybody is because of your haptic suit. I love all that stuff. I think it's really interesting. It's like ready player one without all the eighties references. It is. Yeah. It's kind of like a not kind of like more of a real, if, if it were realistic, it'd be more of a realistic thing. And then I'm also reading the great Gatsby. I read it again because... That incredibly bored me in high school. Dude, I, I was just yeah. going to say that's the most boring book I've ever read. That was the first book I ever read that I hated. <laughs> you know what's weird? Do you I've, like it I've now? Had, no, I, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. so I'm just reading it. I was like not... It's, you know, I think... And it's more for me. I Whenever I get into a scenario where there's like adultery, yeah. like or like some or like they're trying to glorify adultery, it hurts they're my like, heart. Oh, yeah, like my heart more. hurts. Like mm. when I read it, I'm like, this is really gross like uh, i'm like i mean even though but is it supposed it was to be dark so like ago, it's not condoning it in a way or is it like i mean it is a little dark but it's also kind of like the main character is is like becoming a liaison between these two mm. people that i mean to me i'm like this is so morally wrong <laughs> like i'm like I, I have such a hard time it's a visceral reaction but a depiction isn't yeah. the same thing as he actually hate, he hates adultery so much he's reading it again yeah yeah i wanted to read it again <laughs> Uh, and Find then I was like, wait, so, so I what hate it in the, yes. uh, the other thing is I'm, st I'm taking like a whole year to read Brandon Sanderson's The Way of Kings series because I'm reading so slow and I don't have time to listen anymore because um, usually I'm learning lines or something in the car. So like, I'm just trying to like, I, I can't listen. I'm doing work in the car. No, no. While you guys. You, no, you guys are all texting. Fiddle thought around. That's, that's yeah, just that's kind of the true. opposite. You're yeah. in the car. You're using that to do work. Whereas I feel like when I do have time to sit and read yeah. a book, that's when I should be writing or working mm. on editing yeah. something. Yeah. Or, yeah. No, that's smart. I, mean, I think to me, if I can do two things at once, I would rather do that. So like, I don't want to like that's put what all my... Is. <laughs> that's Doing two oh. things at once. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Babylon Bee. <laughs> That's how they do it in Babylon. So I so, saw. Yeah. I also read Frankenstein and uh, Oh yeah, Animal Farm and uh, Oh, we just read Animal. I read Animal Farm to the kids, and I read Jekyll and Hyde mm. this weekend. This just those three, this weekend, all three of those. Yeah. Well, and, and it's because you're running, right? Like you're running, running and, and gym, and like I was on a plane for three hours. Hey, yeah, yeah. See, that's what you got to yeah. do. 
That's what you gotta do. So I'm Rick jealous. Me thing also remind me our conversation there in the first. It, it, what is it? Third or fourth season of South Park? There's an episode where all the kids get. Uh, they want to get diagnosed with ADHD so they can get uh, Adderall, <laughs> and then um, the test that the, <laughs> the school gives them to see if they have ADHD is they have to sit there and listen while the teacher reads The Great Gatsby. <laughs> and they all start going out of their minds saying, this is so boring. This he goes, oh my worst. gosh, all of you kids have ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like it. I mean, I, I do like the language in it. Yeah. It's just the the story itself just bothers me. I'm just like, ah, mm. it's frustrating. And but, I also beat Link's Awakening on the Switch and Metroid Prime Remastered on the Switch. Nice. You've been doing a lot. Yeah, I've, just not I've been, any work. I've been hanging out with my kids. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I also do jujitsu now. So that's taken up some of my extra time. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's cool. Do you, you do jujitsu? We should roll on the podcast. Is that what you say when you want to fight somebody? Let's roll. Americans are discovering that if we want to change the nation, we have to change the way the marketplace works. And that change starts with you, with your local communities, and with your wallet. Be deliberate with your dollars and reject woke corporations. Imagine a world in which every single dollar you spend would go towards companies that share your values for life, liberty, and patriotism. Now with the Public Square app, you can. Public SQ, or Public Square, is an app and website that connects freedom-loving Americans to the community and companies that share their values. Engage in a nationwide platform with the largest directory of patriotic businesses and consumers all while accessing exclusive savings at businesses that see the world the way you do. The marketplace is free to join for consumers and business owners alike. To get started and shop your values, download the Public Square app from the App Store or Google Play, or click on the link in the video description. And now it's time for another interview on the Babylon Bee Podcast. Hey, so this is the interview show. Today we have... Kristen Wagner here, and other, not to be confused with Christian, Chris, Kristen Wagoneer or Kristen <laughs> Wagoner. You know, we already did this before we Wagoner. hit record, and then we said, oh, good, that wasn't recorded. <laughs> and then you decided to do it anyway. <laughs> That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> I just love your, I, I just, I, I love what you guys do. ADF is wonderful. We're massive fans over here, so we're really happy to have you on. You're doing the work that uh, we're making work for you guys, I think, on some level, you know, like. Offending people. And well, I got to tell you, um, we circulate your stuff pretty regularly, <laughs> especially when it's on our cases, because we, we need the levity. Um, so yeah. glad that you have a good sense of humor about it. <laughs> yes, you are the serious face of, of the fight for free speech. Yeah, we're just so kind of standing important. on the sidelines of the battle <laughs> laughing at everything, which <laughs> you guys are actually on the front lines of the battle. You know, I, I think uh, uh, the Colorado uh, Masterpiece cake shop case was the one that uh started bringing all of this stuff to at least to my attention you right. know that people that right. christians were being or any believer really anybody with any kind of beliefs was being compelled to uh create speech that went against their beliefs and i know the current one that's before the Supreme court is the 303 creative case which is a, i think an issue of web design do you want to uh, uh explain that like we're five years old yeah. Sure. Well, if we're going to talk like we're five-year-olds, then I would probably start <laughs> with Masterpiece. Um, you know, you start at the beginning. Um, the beginning really is in 2012 when we started to see activist organizations come after different vocations trying to establish the legal principle that you can force people to say things they don't believe and to use or misuse non-discrimination laws as weapons to essentially silence and punish those who believe that marriage is between a man and a woman or who believe that, you know, there is such thing as man and woman and that they're different. Um, so in 2012, that kind of started and started with Jack Phillips, among a couple of others like Baron L. Stutzman out of Washington State. Jack Phillips owned Masterpiece Cake Shop. His case went to the United States Supreme Court. And I had the privilege of arguing in 2017. We won in 2018. The reason I say that is because the natural question is, why are we talking about 303 when we've already had masterpiece and we thought we won. 
The reason is that uh, the 2018 victory and masterpiece was based on the free exercise of religion, not on free speech. The court didn't address the free speech question and instead said Colorado officials were so bad to Jack Phillips that they had so much hostility in how they treated him that that in and of itself meant the process wasn't legitimate because they compared his religious beliefs to those held by owners of the Holocaust and by slave owners. And they had a double standard in their law where they protected the cake artists they liked and didn't protect people like Jack. So 303 Creative is a pre-enforcement challenge. It's a case where Lori is also from Denver. She's a website designer. She creates custom websites and graphic design and wanted to be able to enter into the wedding industry to promote her view, her face view of marriage. And Colorado's law says that if she does that, she puts herself at great peril. So she filed a lawsuit and that case went to the Supreme Court and it's based on free speech. So that's the sole question in the case right now. Mm. Now explain it like we're three. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to say things you don't want to say. <laughs> there, that, uh, that actually, I uh, now that. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> now why, why Colorado? Why Colorado? Yeah, and what's the deal is, with Colorado? What I mean, I grew up in Colorado. I love Colorado. Why is this the, the front line of this battle for free speech and free expression of religion? Well, I think that's a good question in the sense of we don't, we know that activists were targeting different jurisdictions and different vocations back in 2012. Like if you want to be trying to establish this principle, you know, they're, they're picking jurisdictions that they think they can win in. And Colorado has the most aggressive enforcement history um, in the United States in terms of trying to use these laws and, and weaponize them against people that don't agree with the government's ideology about sex. And so they started with Masterpiece and have continued to take that position now since 2012. They have gone after those who would not want to create a message, a custom message that would violate their convictions. But we are seeing these laws and these lawsuits play out all across the United States right now. It's certainly not just Colorado. It seemed like people were picking on Jack, Jack Phillips. I don't know if you'd use the terminology or not, but it seems like it's a tourist industry where people just go there just to be oppressed by him. Is he still like, because I heard that he still has some legal troubles today, even though he won in front of the Supreme Court. He does. We're still representing him. It's his third case right now. And we just lost that case at the Court of Appeals a couple of weeks ago. Um, the principle, again, is that in Jack's case and Lori's in the other decisions that have gone before the different courts, these people are people that serve everyone. They're making distinctions based on what the message is that's requested, not who the person is that's requesting it. Everything hinges on what are you asking them to say? What's the message? And in Jack's case, um, the day that the court agreed to hear his Supreme Court case the first time, the he got a call from a transgender attorney who asked him to design a cake that would celebrate a birthday, um, essentially the birthday and the transition of a man to a woman. And he said, I'm sorry, I can't celebrate that message. I can't create a custom cake with blue on the outside and pink on the inside that signifies and celebrates a gender transition. A little bit later, that transgender attorney also called and asked him to create a cake that would celebrate Satan smoking a joint, um, <laughs> thinking that that also might trap him into some sort of religious discrimination claim. Mm. And this first Colorado, 24 days after we won at the United States Supreme Court, Colorado came after Jack again. Mm. And then we essentially beat them a second time, uncovering evidence that they were continuing with their hostile statements, so they settled and then and dismissed and then the next thing you know this transgender activist files the third case so that case is being litigated right now and mm. it's an attempt to crush the conscience and compel the voice of artists to the point where this activist attorney says he's going to keep coming back until he changes jack's mind or he wins wow yeah do you think that that is the case actually this guy is going to be a burr in jack's saddle for the rest of his life <laughs> Well, the Supreme Court has the opportunity to provide guidance um, for Jack's case in Lori's case, which is called 303 Creative. It has the opportunity to tell these courts that are progressive that are refusing to even acknowledge that photographs are speech or that words are speech to instead say, you know what, we've never compelled speech in this nation's history and we're not going to do so now. So we're really hopeful that we'll have a broad ruling from the Supreme Court in June. That's interesting. I hadn't realized that the Jack Phillips case didn't really touch on free speech and that 303 Creative does. So you guys have already made your arguments and they're deliberating. Do you have any idea uh, when that might come down? 
My expectation is sometime between probably April and June, the court usually um, will end its session at the end of June, sometimes the first week of July, and sometimes it will hold you know, the, what's considered the controversial opinions until the end. We just don't know, but we do know that sometime between April probably and June we'll have an answer, and we are hopeful that it will be a broad ruling that protects the rights of all Americans, regardless of their viewpoint. I mean, these laws apply to the lesbian graphic designer and the Democrat publicist just as much as to the, the pro, pro-life pro photographer and the Christian artist. Yeah, that's good. That's you, good. You mentioned also uh, a case that you said is coming up here about women's women in sports. What, what What's the deal with that one? Well, there are a number of cases that ADF has been litigating on behalf of women in sports, both at the uh, high school level as well as at the collegiate level. You may have heard of our Connecticut uh, track case that's mm-hmm. been going on. That was the first case that was filed on this issue. And there have been a couple of other cases as well. The legislative team at ADF has been able to assist a number of states, 18 right now, to pass laws to save women's sports, which basically say it's not right for men to compete against women, um, and certainly men to compete against girls in athletics that denies them a fair play and equal opportunities. That law has been challenged, and one of those places is in West Virginia, where we serve as counsel with West Virginia, and I'm pleased to say we won at the trial court, a permanent injunction is the first win that the nation has had. And of course, uh, the ACLU and others plan to appeal that very soon in the next day or two. So that will continue to be fought out in the appellate courts. And it's a critical issue, not just for women, but for families and the implications that it has overall when we take away legitimate biological distinctions. What is the argument for the other side in the transports thing? I I mean, because it doesn't seem like it's a very rational argument and shouldn't really be something that you could put into law. So what is their Mm -hmm. argument and how do you how do you argue against it? Well, the argument is basically, you know, this idea that uh, trans women are women, that um, you can decide that biology doesn't matter, that it shouldn't have a role. It's a little bit of a target, you know, where they just throw up whatever can stick. It used to be about the science. Um, Now there's still some arguments about the science, but our experts have repeatedly demonstrated through the science that there are legitimate biological distinctions between boys and girls and that those have an enduring difference. Um, And so now they're shifting more towards sort of an equal protection, dignity type interest in some cases. Um, And again, we can be kind and respectful and we can show dignity to all people, but we also need to be kind and respectful and show dignity to women and girls and to recognize their right to fair play, their right to privacy, their right to safety. And all of those are at risk in these cases. It really doesn't make sense, which is why I actually think that the Babylon Bee does play an important role in pointing out the logical inconsistencies in this battle. Yeah, the problem is if we take men out of women's sports, we won't have anything to make jokes about. <laughs> that's true. I, I do wonder. That's like one, one of our one only of our two, two jokes. jokes. Is, uh, yeah, so that's the problem. One of our two. But uh, you, Yeah, well, you won't have yeah. anything to watch anymore either. Uh, <laughs> in the, I mean, it's just, you know, the, it, yeah. it, it ruins it for the women and girls. We know what the stats say about the importance of athletics and all that it provides both Um, you know, boys and girls. I had the privilege of playing sports in college as well, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. Mm -hmm. And to suggest somehow that a high school guy or even a college guy is able to, you know, not, isn't superior physically to a woman just makes no sense and it has no support. And again, mm-hmm. it, we have to think about the implications more broadly, what it does to families, what it does to parental rights. We're seeing all kinds of litigation involving parental rights, um, involving these issues as well. So there are broad implications to it. Yeah. Um, if you had to draft three Supreme Court justices for your fantasy Supreme Court team, <laughs> who would you pick? <laughs> oh, I've, got my, I I've would... got my Clarence Thomas shirt on here. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I, I mean, so you mean those that aren't already on the court, right? Like, um, yeah, yeah, you're drafting them for your fantasy court. It could be any, uh, I guess it could be any historical Supreme Court justice as well. Wow. I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if I should go there in terms of, I, I would probably pick some of the, my own people that work here at ADF. Um, oh, okay. John, right. You know, 
John Birch has argued 13 cases before the Supreme Court and uh, been Solicitor General of Michigan. Aaron Hawley was the one that helped us win the Dobbs case with Mississippi and clerk for the Chief Justice. I'm looking, when we talk to the White House, when we've had a friendly administration about who should be on that list, uh, we're beyond just looking at whether they're originalists or textualists, mm -hmm. but also to whether they have moral courage. Mm -hmm. And I think that has been the missing quotient in a number of justices, even mm. some justices that have been appointed by Republicans. So I think that we've got to insist that they have a demonstrated record on standing up for these contentious issues that really matter and look more to what the law says and you know the, the common law on these issues as well, rather than just do they have the political credentials to be on the bench. But I'm optimistic. Um, again, I mean, we've had 14 Supreme Court victories in the last 10 years. Um, hopefully this will be the 15th and in a number of other victories, the court is protecting First Amendment freedoms. I wish it was broader and quicker, but um, they are protecting these freedoms. And so that's good news for all of us. I just yeah. want to make an observation. So for a person who spends their life um, in battle, like constantly in a conflict over something or another, and the stakes are so high. You have you seem to have a lot of peace. Where where does that come from? You seem like a happy person. And you're happier than me. Where does that come? Way happier than I Kyle. tell jokes yeah, for a living. Right. And I'm just mad at everybody on the. <laughs> that's typical for comedians, but yeah, but yeah. But the happy lawyer who's doing all this battle. Why why are you so happy? Where does your joy come from? Are you so happy? Yeah. That's well, right. <laughs> you know, I my joy comes from my relationship with Jesus. Um, I. I have a piece about how things end and he's called us at ADF to walk in faithful obedience and to leave the results to him. I'm just talking to our team this morning about the three characteristics of a team member here. And one is that we abide in Christ with the fruits of the spirit, including in how we communicate. Two is that we're gonna do hard things by walking into the wind. And three is we're working diligently with joy and expecting astonishing results, just as the early church did. And so we're excited here about what God's gonna do in our season. And we believe that he's chosen all of us to live at this moment as crazy as it seems to be right now. You really set her up for that one, man. <laughs> I, I did. <laughs> he's ready with that. We need to write those down for the that beat. That was good. Yeah, that was really good. How can our Babylon Bee followers, listeners, and viewers support ADF if they wish to do so? Well, first of all, those that pray, we, we need prayer. I mean, the, the people that we get to stand beside are amazing people, and they face the loss of all they own. We also have an international component where we're helping people get out of jail, um, you know, having not only death threats against them, but even potential death sentences. And so just praying for our clients, um, as well as our attorneys and the safety of the team. I've gone to a, we've gone to a number of, of instances where we're facing these kinds of threats, a more hostile environment, even on Yale. Yale's Law Campus and others. So that kind of prayer. Um, and also giving. You can go to our website at adflegal.org and give. Our services are all free of charge to those that we serve. And also educate yourself. Find out more about these things because we all have a lane in this, in this battle. And it's to speak to our communities, speak to our neighbors about truth and not shy away from it. It's not wrong to believe in right and wrong. And we should say so. Wow. I like that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for yeah. coming on, Christian. This is great. Everybody, please go check out ADF and support her in all those ways. And can we have your cell phone in case we get into problems with California? That's the other thing. <laughs> oh, other I thing. love <laughs> Just, yeah. My favorite states to sue are California, Washington, and New York. So <laughs> you call is, me whenever you need help. Absolutely. That is good to know. That's good to know. <laughs> awesome. All right, thank, thank you, you so much. I appreciate thank you so the time. much. God have bless. a great day. Well, guys, since we have to prepare for Be Live, that's all the time we have for today. We're going to move into Mailbag for our subscriber portion. So join us in the subscriber lounge, and we can't wait to see you guys at Be Live. By the time this comes out, you'll be like on planes and in cars and heading to Be Live. Coming up next for Babylon Bee subscribers. My son, my six-year-old son, tries to do the Would You Rathers because he like heard the oh, Would You Rather, yeah. but he doesn't get the idea that you're supposed to like like two terrible things and you have oh. to pick which. And it's always like, would you rather go to Disneyland or die? Very long, like we're gonna read through Lord of the Rings over 50 episodes, and instead we're gonna do one book. We'll, Eggs and ham. We'll... <laughs> over 50 episodes. Is the US still redeemable? This has been another edition of the Babylon Bee Podcast. From the dedicated team of certified fake news journalists you can trust here at the Babylon Bee, reminding you that Jesus is King.